and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Frank, and thank you, Bob Shen, my brothers in law. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the life of William Lyle Knapp, my dad. I'm Sherry, I am the middle Knapp girl, and we really appreciate everyone coming out today. Uh, this is really not the, quite the service that we wanted to have, but due to COVID, it's the safest way. And hopefully next summer we can all get together and have a nice get together. Our dad had a wonderful life and enjoyed many roles in his 79 years, including being a father to his three beautiful and talented girls. And we know this because, you know, our mom and dad told us this many times. Um, dad loved his family, his parents, Katie and Lyle Knapp, his siblings, brother Herb and his sister, Marianne, and by the way, a special shout out to Uncle Herb, Aunt Janet, and the NAP clan, who couldn't be with us today. We know you wanted to be here, um, but please stay safe. They're joining us virtually from Texas, Tennessee, and Maine. We love you. Dad had also many cousins, and he adopted our mom's cooter cousins as his own, and we had shared many, many fun holidays and reunions over the years. And dad especially loved his family, his grandchildren and spending time with them. He was a loving husband to our mom, Judy, for over 35 years and later to Betty. I think most of us will remember dad as a friend. He was a friend to nature, and animals, humans alike. In addition to being a family man, Dad was also very involved in his community. When I was going through old family albums, I was reminded of everything that he had been involved with over the years. For example, how many of you remember the New London JCs in the 1960s? Uh, Dad was a member and he was even served as a president for a little while. Scouting was big in the Knapp family. My grandparents were very involved in scouts and dad was a Boy Scout, became a Boy Scout leader. He helped our mom with the Girl Scouts. He later encouraged my sisters and me to join our 4-H club, the Rocking H 4-H club, where he eventually became an advisor, a role that he kept even after we moved on. He loved track and field, and he was dedicated many of his years to being a high school track official. He spent time volunteering on the New London Park Board, Meals on Wheels, and again, following in his mom's footsteps, he took a seat on the Huron County Health Board, eventually becoming president, which is a role he held up until his death. I'm sure most of you have some great memories of our dad, Bill. And I have to say, I love reminiscing and sharing stories. And originally, when I was thinking of writing this up, I had like 16 favorite memories that I wanted to share with everybody. But, um, you know, my sisters, they made me cut that down just a little bit. So I just wanted to share, you know, when I think of dad, um, I think of somebody, he was a supportive father. He was frugal with a capital F, right, Jay Thomas? Uh, he was a great storyteller and a wonderful sense of humor. And he was smart. You know, he's one of the few people that I know that was able to saw the Rubik Cube without cheating. Um, unfortunately, he didn't pass those genes on to me. But anyway, you know, I loved sitting at our dinner table, listening to dad spin either stories about the day's current events, or sometimes we get to hear him talk about his past high school, escapades such as the time that his classmates drove his car into the New London High School. So he had to go in and drive it through the hallways and out the front door. One of the stories my dad would tell starts with uh, this horse barn right over here. Um, being frugal, he was able to get most of the materials for this barn from another one being torn down. He did most of the work himself with a little bit of help from others. And one day, 
I was helping him put the roof on the barn and I was hammering those nails into the roof and I wasn't very good. So I would occasionally hit my thumb with the hammer and I'd say, ow, to myself. And unfortunately, I kept hitting the hammer on my thumb and each time I said, ow, a little bit louder until finally I looked at dad and I said, you know what, dad? Did you know every time you hit your thumb, it hurts even more? <laughs> and I thought it was being pretty profound. And he just smiled and looked at me. And I think he might have said, you know, yeah, Sherry, that's right. Well, he loved telling that story over and over again about, you know, his brilliant daughter and how she came to realize, you know, if you hit yourself again and again, it's going to hurt more. And I think he loved telling that so much, especially in my presence. Uh, he was even telling that story up to last summer, which, you know, is like 40 years after it happened. I think we both enjoyed listening to that story. And, you know, another favorite memory of mine is about this dedicated, fun-loving, and proud father. My sisters and I were so fortunate to grow up here um, with horses. Our dad, he loved horses and he passed that love on to us. And he spent many hours teaching us techniques to improve our horsemanship so that we could do well at uh, the horse competitions and the barrels and stakes and flag races or whatever competition we were in. Our Sundays were spent at local horse shows with our horse loving neighbors, mostly the Bowers and the Rumbaws. And these shows were sometimes very competitive and other times they were just for fun. And the fun ones, uh, we enjoyed just as much. And they actually, if you can imagine, you're racing down on your horse, down a track, and then you do a sack race back. And these were all timed events, so whoever got down there and back the fastest um, would win. But there were things like the sack race. There was um, drag the sack race, which you, raced down on your horse, and then you pulled somebody on a sack down the end of the track as fast as you could. And I just wanna pause and say, thank you, Brenda, for being that person to be drunk down the track. I think our dad talked to him doing that. Um, there are things like the catalog race, the crazy bat, um, even bobbing for apples. I have another story for that, but I'll save it for another day. Uh, I just wanna, you know, at the end of the day, after all these horse shows and spending time with our dad, whether we won or lost, we had a wonderful time. So I just want to say thank you, Dad, for the memories, your love, and for always being there when you were needed. Now my sister Pam would like to share a few words. Good afternoon, I'm Pam, I'm the youngest. Um, I tend to be very emotional, so don't mind me. Um, we all knew dad and I'm very grateful that I do have a ton of memories and stories. From my life with mom and dad. I got to know dad on so many different levels throughout our journey together. I feel very blessed and I have no regrets. When mom died, dad told me he had no regrets. He was doing everything he wanted to do with mom. It is the same for me and my dad. I have no regrets. The memory I decided to share was about strength. When I think about dad, strength is a word that fits him. Strength of his mind, body, and soul. Physical strength, inner strength, strength of character, strength to change, strength to stand up and be true to himself. My story is about a short time when I was about in the seventh grade. It was our job to carry the lantern in the grain bucket out to the shed. And when you got to the shed, there was deep muck in front of the door, so Dad had placed a board across the muck for you to step on. And one night, I missed the board. My foot sank into the muck, and I had forward momentum. My foot came out of my boot, 
I made it into the shed without spilling the grain. I was on my knees and I just started crying. When dad saw what happened, he pulled my boot out of the muck, picked me up and carried me to the house. Strength, that's my dad. Now, my son Eric will read a poem that he wrote. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Eric, um, Bill Lamp's grandson. Um, I titled this Rest Easy. You built a strong family, one that takes care of each other. The foundation is dedication, hard work, and boundless love. All those times we sat and talk, talked, me with my cigarettes, you with your toothpick. All those gatherings, the togetherness, all the chores and projects down to the simplest thing, the finishing touches, the mistakes that made it ours. All the pie, so excited to have us together, there was way too much. Your second fridge, just so there was enough for everyone to have something they liked. Ice cream that you had to eat right away or it melted, made with love. The fish in the pond, they always liked you better than anyone else. They knew you cared for them, gathered for dinner. The buzzards sunning themselves, unbathed by your morning walk. You were the groundskeeper, the patriarch, the public servant, the trusted mentor, the companion, the adventurer, the dancer, the guitar and the sweet voice, the reader and teller of stories, the comedian, the teacher, the maker of trinkets and masterpieces alike, the helping hand, the kind word, the smiling face, the proud grandfather and the trusted friend to all. We spoke in plain terms with the same sense of humor, like a second language. I wear my boots like you did and I always will. I hope someday I will have the pleasure of sitting down for a bologna sandwich with you again. I love and will always honor you. Rest easy, Grandpa. The work is done. Thank you. Um, now, uh, Vika Gavala, uh, Bill Knapp's granddaughter. Hello, my name is Vika Gavala. I'm Bill's granddaughter. So I'd like to start by saying that Grandpa may not have been my dad, but we had a very special bond. You were my first friend. You met my brother and I at the airport the day we were adopted and came to meet us for the first time. You used to drive an hour just to come play with us or come to an event we had. When I walked down memory lane with you, I remember the times at your house where you taught me to fish, guided me, laughed with me, and most importantly, you taught me many aspects of growing up. You could always ask him when you needed advice and he was the man whose word you could always take. My grandpa was a humble man. He never liked to be the center of attention. He wouldn't want us to focus on the sadness of his death, but instead focus on the happiness in our lives. He would want us to appreciate each other and remember what good he brought for us to share. Grandpa, I will always miss you, but I have so many wonderful memories to hang on to. You were a role model and a friend. I wish I could give you one last hug, but until I see you again, I will continue to carry your name with honor and gratitude. Next, I would like to introduce my Aunt Brenda. Good afternoon. I am Brenda, Judy and Bill's oldest daughter. I have two memories that I'd like to share this afternoon. The first one is from when I was about 12 years old. As Pam mentioned, we took turns helping dad feed and water the horses each night. You probably know that horses need to eat and drink even in the cold of winter. So I remember one cold starry evening after feeding the horses, dad said, let's go for a walk around the pond. So I followed dad around the pond. I was looking up at all the beautiful and brilliant stars in the sky, and it occurred to my 12-year-old self that the world must be a pretty big place. So I asked my dad, I said, Dad, why do we live here? He pondered for a moment, and he simply replied, because I would rather be a big fish in a small pond than a small fish in a big pond. Now I remember my 12-year-old self looking over at the pond and trying to puzzle that one out. I'm not sure I really understood then, but I do now, Dad. You made a huge difference in your little pond with all the lives that you've touched. My next memory is when I was in my 20s. I remember coming home to visit often, possibly just for a meal. Things were not easy for me in my 20s. I was trying to make it on my own, and quite frankly, it was tough. I remember sitting in the yard talking to Dad after a hard week in the city. And as I got up to walk to my car and leave, I remember Dad saying to me, just remember, no matter where you are in the world, all roads lead to Cook Road, if then you're going the right way. Memorial 
sort of assume that the brick house has been concluded. We'll now begin the procession of Clark Field Methodist Church Cemetery for internment. For those joining us for the brief internment services at the cemetery, social distancing will be observed at 8 p.m. Please tune your car radio to 90.5 FM when you arrive. Thank you. We'll now proceed to the assembly. As I step down from the train, there to meet me is my mama and my papa. Down the road I look, I'm going to carry the caribou. And lifts the black cherries, it's good to touch the green grass of home. Yes, they'll all come to meet me, arms and legions, smile and sweetly. It's good to touch the green grass of home. The old house is standing on the table that And there's that old old tree that I used to Down the lane I walk with my sweet fairy. Careful, you Thank you. 